So here are the hyperbolic sine and cosine functions. We've got the firstly the cosine cosh x is e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2 and sine of x or sometimes sinh of x people call it, say it however you like but it's hyperbolic sine of x uh, is e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2. So the names are quite leading, obviously we've talked about sine and cosine before and before we start doing any detail with these functions it's just it's interesting just to think about uh, where these names come from and why we might expect there to be some similarities with the ordinary uh, sine and cosine functions. Now um, for sine and cos, uh, just the ordinary sine and cos, you probably know that they relate to the uh, to the unit circle. So uh, the unit circle is uh, x squared plus y squared uh, equals 1 and they re these relates to sine and cosine because if I take a point uh, on the unit circle, uh, this is 1 and we've got uh, for a particular angle theta here we've got cos theta uh, and sine theta. So actually this unit circle is parameterized by x equals cos theta and y equals sine theta for different values of theta. This gives us this gives us uh, different points on the unit circle. And here then is a graph of a hyperbola and the formula for this is x squared minus y squared equals 1. And it turns out that um, these hyperbolic uh, sine and cosine functions, x equals, if I did x equals cos theta and y equals sine theta, that would parameterize uh, this um, uh, hyperbola. So I can't draw such an obvious picture as this one, but if I took a point on here, essentially there's some value of theta uh, where this coordinate is equal to cos theta sine theta, and that's true for every other point on the hyperbola. In fact, uh, I'm lying a little bit there, this parameterization only gives you this right hand side uh, of the hyperbola. There are other parameterizations that will give you the left hand side um, of the hyperbola as well. For example, if you did x equals uh, sec theta, y equals tan theta, that would give you both sides. But in principle, looking at these two types of functions, cos and cos, sine and shine, they come from the same, you know, you can see them as sort of examples of the same sort of thing. The only thing that's changed is uh, a minus here. Now, what one consequence of this immediately is, well, from, you know, when we look at the uh, tr ordinary trig functions, we've got the identity sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1, but something very similar for the hyperbolic um, functions, it's just we've got a minus instead of a plus. So uh, our identity uh, here is cos squared theta um, minus sine squared theta is 1. Yeah, very similar identity. Um, there are other things that are quite similar but just a little bit different about these. For example, if we differentiate um, the ordinary trig functions, we have that d by dx of sine x equals cos x and uh, d by dx of cos x is minus sine of x, uh, whereas for the hyperbolic functions we've got d by dx of uh, sine x equals cos x, that's very similar, uh, but for cos x we have d by dx of cos x equals sine x. So in, in a way the results are slightly simpler for sine and cos. If you differentiate sine you get cos and vice versa. You don't have to worry about the, uh, the negatives. So let's just prove those assertions that I've just made then. The first one uh, being that that identity uh, is true, that cos squared x minus sine squared x uh, is always equal to 1. So these really do parameterize uh, the hyperbola. Um, when you're proving an identity with hyperbolic sine and cosine, um, one thing that very often uh, works will just be to substitute in um, the exponential forms that we've got here, the definitions, and uh, and then see what happens. So I'm proving identity, so I'm not going to assume that it's true. This is the end result that I want. I'm going to start with the instead. I'm going to start with the left hand side and try and work it into the right hand side. Okay, so um, cos squared of x that would be e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 squared and sine squared of x that would be e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 squared so um, let's multiply these out so uh, there's a half squared everywhere so I'm going to get a quarter and I'm going to have e to the x plus e to the minus x squared 
and then I'm going to have minus e to the x minus e to the minus x uh, squared. And so just multiplying uh, these out, I get e to the x times e to the x, that's e to the x squared, or e to the 2x. Um, I'm going to get e to the minus x times e to the minus x, so that's uh, e to the minus 2x. The other two terms are going to be e to the x times e to the minus x. Um, e to the x times e to the minus x is just 1, and I've also got e to the minus x times e to the x, so that's 1 as well. So I get uh, plus 2 here, and then I get minus, uh, well, e to the x times e to the x, that's e to the 2x, e to the minus x times e to the minus x, that's e to the minus 2x, I've got two minuses to make a plus, and again, I've got these terms uh, that uh, give 1, uh, but this time they're both negative, minus e to the minus x times e to the x, and the other one as well. So I get minus 2 in here, and what we see is what well, I've got e to the 2x minus e to the 2x, so they cancel out, but e to the minus 2x and minus e to the minus 2x, they cancel out, and I've got 2 minus minus 2, so that's 4, so this is just a quarter times 4, uh, which is 1. And so we've proved that that identity uh, is true. Um, the other things that I asserted were that uh, the derivative d by dx of shine x is equal to cosh x. So let's have a look at that. Well, d by dx of shine x, that would be the derivative of uh, e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2. And so differentiating this gives... Uh, well, e to the x differentiates to itself, and this is all just multiplied by half, so I'm not going to worry about the, the half, let's just put that, that outside. Um, so that's just uh, e to the x, and I differentiate e to the minus x, and I get minus e to the minus x. So you've got minus minus e to the minus x, so that's plus e to the minus x. And this is just uh, the definition of cosh x. So that is cosh x. And similarly, if I look at d by dx of cosh x, uh, that's d by dx of e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2 and again differentiating this uh, term by term e to the x is just e to the x and this is minus e to the minus x which is exactly the definition of, of sine x a half e to the x minus e to the minus x um, so there we go, we've proven that shine differentiates to the cosh and cosh differentiates back to shine so this is just an introduction to these functions, hopefully you can see there's something uh, really interesting going on here a bit like sine and cosine but also a bit different and we'll explore these a lot more in, in other videos